Hello everybody and welcome to Riding the Pine, where three guys sit around talking about sports and reminisce about their playing days. And by playing days, I mean the awkward years of high school where being a member of the football team meant getting a water bottle for the star quarterback in order to refresh him from a grueling 15-minute finger blasting of your high school sweetheart. Fuck you, Ashley. You broke my heart. And today with me I have Lou and David, which uh, I guess that's that's two in a row. We're on a streak. Have you ever streaked before, Lou? Uh, no. Not well, no, not intentionally. I have. Well, it. Uh, that sounds like a walk of shame, if um, I'm honest. Uh, I, was, I was actually pretty proud of myself at the time when it happened. Oh, uh, yeah? Well, hanging yeah. between the knees. Good for you. David, you ever uh, streaked? I lost a shirt at a party once and went about three hours shirtless. And uh, some, Oh, you were that someone... guy. Did you also play acoustic guitar? <laughs> no. Um, well, at the time, I, I used to be fit. And uh, someone told me You're very still drunkenly. Pretty fit. You're a skinny dude. Well, I'm a skinny dude, but someone told me, "Well, at least you have abs." And they continued to tell me for the rest of the night. At least you have so, abs. The rest of you, you is lacking, abs. but at least you have abs. Yeah, I was your personality say, is garbage. But hey. Yeah, that's that's all I had. <laughs> I was gonna say for our viewers who can't see David, um, it's actually kind of a crime. It was only three hours. Uh, that. <laughs> however long the party was that he wasn't shirtless that's a shitty party and i don't want to or that he i don't want to be at that party i want to be at three hour shirtless party david i agree i agree that's, that's you the know what else i, I agree about the rundown i prepared Oof. here's the rundown games one from the east and west uh conference playoffs obviously that means uh warriors thunder and Cavs raptors one of those was a shit show Stick, stay tuned for the results of the shit show. NBA head coaching carousel, because that always happens at this time of the year. And there's actually not that much news, but someone wanted to talk about it, David. NBA draft conspiracy slash Dikembe Mutombo. There was a slash in there because Dikembe Mutombo might have spilled the beans. Let's cue the Illuminati music. That was good. That was good Illuminati music. Draymond Green likes the WNBA, which is... Just if there's if there's one more thing to add to his superhuman abilities, it's his ability to also like a garbage sport. Uh, NBA jersey sponsors, which is happening, and also we may make up some of our sponsors. Tampa Bay Lightning jersey controversy, which Lou is super uh, messed up about, and also penis transplant. We're gonna end the show talking about a man who uh, received the first penis transplant in world history, which is pretty amazing. And so to start it off, obviously, we are going to the Warriors and Thunder in that matchup, which game one was really, really great. I really had a, a good time with that game. I'm sad I can't watch it all already again. It was an instant classic, in my opinion. Instant classic as far as going back and forth throughout the game. It told a great story. Uh, Warriors start off slow, come back strong. It looks like at you know, the end of the first half, they've got the game all wrapped up. Russell Westbrook just fights back like a dog that's been backed into a corner, mm -hmm. uh, like the like the the mangy pit bull that he is, and uh, and and I guess he's a three legged dog, and the refs felt sorry for him because they let him get away with a complete travel at the end of the game. They let him they let him walk away with that. Uh, let Let's be real though; the NBA officiating hasn't necessarily been the greatest thing in the Western Conference. Has playoffs. it ever been good in any like? It's it been. Seems this is always a talking point in the playoffs. I feel like maybe it's worse now, or or it seems like there's less mistakes in the regular season, or maybe maybe we just care less because it's the regular season and we don't care what happens to the Milwaukee Bucks. But this this mattered, and that was a huge travel. Like everyone on the court is going travel. Like Clay Thompson's right there. He's like, yeah, it, it was travel. I want to push back against this a little bit because, well. For example, Steve Kerr defended the referees, explained how tough their job is, and how just the a weird angle. They don't have the benefit of having a godlike view of the court from five cameras. Um, things happen very, very fast. Now, Russell Westbrook obviously traveled, especially from our perspective. I've watched it in <laughs> slow motion about a I've thousand been on times courts. now. I've been on courts, and you can see the fucking court. You can see when someone's like, whoa, he picked that ball up and ran with it. This is not football, sir. If they all make shitty calls fairly consistently, it just means it's really fucking hard to do, or else they should fire all those guys and bring in all us uh, expert viewers who clearly could do a better job. Yeah. 
Obviously. <laughs> but again, so it was it was a terrible call. Um, we all saw it. It was very similar. I don't think it was egregious as uh, Manu Ginobili taking an elbow from Dion Waiters no. to the dome. No. Um, but it obviously is bad. But if this happens in this midway through the second quarter, it doesn't matter. And I don't know that the refs are concentrating so much harder in the fourth quarter than they are in the second quarter. And honestly, there are things that a player can control in a game and things that they can't. Injuries happen, shots rim out, guys slip. The players need to worry about what they can control. And referees are always going to get calls wrong. And the Warriors honestly should have put that game away. And they kept turning the ball over. And Steph Curry couldn't hit shots. Steph Curry, no, you're right. Yeah. That's what's important to me. Turnovers in the second half is what is what led to that. Oh yeah, and also by the way, I think I think the defense of of OKC needs to be talked about because uh, in the fourth quarter, Golden State scored 14 points. Right, 14. And and also, um, I was looking at the stats between this and the Eastern uh, final, and uh, uh, teams respectively, OKC and Golden State shot 89 and 91 times. Uh, in the Toronto and Cleveland matchup, even though Cleveland scored 115, which is more than the other teams, uh, they sh- they shot 76 and 74 times Toronto to Cleveland, respectively. Yeah, that's that's ri- ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. And, um, I mean, field goal percentage in, uh, of 43.8 and 44. Uh, OKC actually sh- shot worse. Um, but they did out-rebound Golden State, uh, and Golden State uh, had more turnovers. Uh, but the really big difference, I, I think, um, was from the three-point line where they made 11 threes. Although they shot way more. Uh, I think, it, what was it, 11 out of 31? It was 11 out of 30 that uh, Golden State made. Uh, but OKC was just more efficient. They they shot almost 50%. It's 47% from three, 8 for 17. That's not bad. That's 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 really fucking good. No, so, they were uh, and, and much they, better. You know, uh, uh, they, they did all right, but it was it was seriously... And there was only two more turnovers, but they were at such bad times. If you look at the box scores, um, and by the way, uh, noting uh, the Thunder only go like eight guys deep. Dion Waiters played thirty minutes the other night. That's nuts, Dion Waiters. Uh, but uh, yeah. the Warriors, um, like like Steph Curry, shot nine for twenty two, which is a pretty bad night for him. And he had uh, he only had seven assists and seven turnovers comparing that to Westbrook who is prone to bad Westbrook we talked about it last time he was 12 and 3 assist to turnovers that's your difference right there uh, yeah uh Russell Westbrook has definitely been the best player in the playoffs so far uh by mm-hmm. my estimation by the way he shot worse than Curry he sh- he shot 7 for 21 that is okay and uh Kevin Durant was 10 for 30 yeah but um, but Westbrook got to the line. Curry was two for two from the line. Westbrook was eleven for fourteen, meaning his uh, meaning that the guys is, were in foul trouble. That is a testament to Westbrook's continued aggression, and he yeah. is picking his spots a little better uh, these days. Um, mm-hmm. The whole Thunder team have suddenly. Now we all underestimated the Thunder, but I don't think we were stupid because they did not show this discipline. No, and. Uh, this execution in the regular season and suddenly everyone is perfectly rotating on defense um they're playing so smart russell i don't know if it's sudden it's just it's just uh they finally hit their stride because they've been trying yeah like steven adams has been one of those consistent defensive guys who's like really good on pick and rolls and stuff like that and then of course you have a baka who you were talking about earlier off off the thing or off podcast uh you mentioned something interesting about him that i think is important serge Ibaka mentioned earlier in the season um when talking about his improved defensive play he uh he talked about how being given an increased role in the offense led him to being more engaged on defense and he yeah. told uh the reporter i'm only human and now that we could see as a huge character flaw, or we could accept that that is a real thing. A guy oh, wants totally to be real. part of the team. Oh yeah, he a, a guy. I mean, it's ridiculous to think that a guy can be happy not getting any touches on offense. Dennis and, Rodman's the only one, I think. Yeah, that's what. 
how many he's just happy there, to be there's there, only man. so many yeah <laughs> some guys are happy to be there some guys are you know wanting to be part of the team they don't want to get huh. five shots a game yeah and it's, uh, it's... honestly Serge Ibaka is too good to get you know five shots a game he should be scoring 15 points a game yeah I so, think he should be getting um, between seven and keep... ten shots at the basket so between the keeping the keeping those guys engaged is important um Guys like Steven Adams are going to always get the ball on lobs and offensive rebounds mm-hmm. because that's what they do. A Serge Ibaka needs to get shots, and they've done a better job at that this season, and that's showing. Um, I mean, the Thunder, they're deferring to their role players. The role players are stepping up, um, and I think feeling valued and getting those shots helps. Andre Robertson, who's been abominable um, as a shooter, is suddenly being called upon to make three-point shots, and he's doing it. I know, right? I actually have a little little fun stat for you guys uh, while we're talking about offense. Even though they weren't that efficient, uh, these are the one, the number one and number two offenses in the league this year, um, which doesn't happen that often. I think it's only happened 11 times uh, in NBA history in playoffs. Um, and actually, the last time that this happened, uh, it was the 97... Um, Bulls and and Jazz, which was a great fucking series. Everyone, anyone who's a basketball fan remembers that series, of course. Uh, I think most people will remember it for either the great shot that Michael Jordan made or the push off that Michael Jordan made. Um, but it's also important to know that the Warriors are the number one offense in the league, and in those matchups, nine the uh, the number one offense is nine and two in series against uh, the the number two offense. Um, it didn't say anything about where the defensive rankings were in, in relation to that. Uh, but I thought that was interesting, especially considering the type of players we have here. We have arguably on the court at any moment in this game, in this series, between three and four, and depending on how you rate Clay Thompson, maybe five of the top ten players in the NBA. Uh, I, I'm really excited about this particular series because it is going to be so explosive. Even though right now uh, they're playing as of this recording, and uh, apparently it's it's a pretty trashy game. It's a very very yeah. Well, ch-ch-chappy. they are playing sloppy basketball, and uh, the Warriors can get a bit sloppy because they all want to make very exciting and flashy passes. Mm-hmm. Draymond Green hold the ball. Draymond Green has the ball wide open on the three point line for two seconds. And he holds the ball and waits until he has an opportunity to rifle a pass through traffic in the paint. <laughs> now, that would look really cool if he su- succeeded. Yep. And the Warriors do that sort of thing. But, God damn it, shoot the open three-point <laughs> shot. <laughs> yeah, also of note, um, Andrew Bogut took zero shots in the loss in Game 1. And I think that's unacceptable. Because the guy comes in, he, played, he only played 17 minutes, granted. But still, he only gets three rebounds total. All of them defensive Three assists. He got two blocks. He was fine. Uh, but no shots for Andrew Bogut. Not a one. Not even an attempt. I'm not saying he didn't make any. He didn't attempt any. That's nuts. Not now, a free throw either. He didn't even get fouled on attempt. You know what I mean? That is <laughs> that is a problem. It's um, egregious. And Spates, but Spates that... either. And their other center, Festus Cizelli, only two shots. So between the three centers, three shots. That I think that speaks to the dominance of uh, Stephen Adams, who has been a monster in the playoffs. Uh, dominance like, is such a strong guy... word to put to him. He's playing really, really well. He reminds me of Tiago Splitter from a few years ago. I'm sorry. Well, Tiago Splitter was great. He's smart, great on defense, um, yeah. developed into a good passer. Stephen Adams um, catches lobs. Like him and Westbrook have great chemistry. Stephen Adams abused Tim Duncan. And oh, David yeah. West oh, yeah. and Boris heard, Diaw, uh, and now I, oh, sorry, he sorry. is making Andrew Bogut look a little bit irrelevant. Now Andrew Bogut's one of my favorite players. Very smart, very smart defender, can pass, but God damn it, Stephen Adams um, just steals his lunch money. Uh, yeah. Like, and Serge Ibaka is so fast, and uh, the Warriors' bigs look a little overmatched. I would agree. I actually have a cool story about Stephen Adams, um, just briefly. Uh, one of his first times in the league, uh, he actually was going up against Tim Duncan. And uh, all game, they were just banging and going against each other. And, uh, 
you know how it is when when bigs get going and uh it was still like it was i think it was last year so i think tim duncan was still doing you know tim duncan things uh and uh, uh he's he's really been given uh tim the business the most of the game and then tim uh walks over during like a free throw or a dead ball situation or something just goes hey man how's it how's it going and is really really super nice to steven adams even though he's been beating the shit out of out, out of tim the whole game uh it's like the fourth quarter or, or maybe it's halftime or something like that uh because then tim duncan goes on to score score like 20 points after that moment because because St- <laughs> Stephen Adams thought oh he's just a nice guy and then uh, I guess uh, Ibaka or or maybe Durant pulls him aside and is like dude you, you can't fall for that stuff that's a vet move like they'll do that to you and get inside your head like that's such a cool Stephen Adams Tim Duncan moment and it kind of shows that Stephen Adams was like nah no I'm going at you I'm I'm giving you the business as many games as I need to until you're gone and it it showed the dude I really like his game. Yeah, I think I, every single team needs him. I, I thought Stephen Adams was actually. Uh, I thought he was just uh, Adam Morrison uh, had had finally grown up. I thought that he had he had like he was like a Pokemon, and Adam his, Morrison like they gave him a Thunderstone, and he evolved his, into his mustache. Finally filled in. It right, finally no. filled in. Yeah, and he, he looks like look a Raichu. Lanky. Yeah, exactly. They gave him a Thunderstone, and he became a member of the of the of the. Of the OKC Thunder. That's what it was. So he just he just needed that extra little boost. Australian Raichu. So uh, I guess we could just move on to the Cavs Raptors. Oh, do we uh, have as to? we ta- well we talked about evolution. We should probably talk about extinction. Uh, um, so uh, if you guys haven't that's seen this, this this meme going around, it's just uh, it's just uh, 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 LeBron James's head superimposed onto a comet, and then and then uh, it's coming down onto a bunch of uh, of like Raptors. And then all of them have crying Jordan faces. Ah. So it's it's beautiful. I've also seen I've also seen LeBron James as um, the Jurassic World guy, you know, the guy from Parks and Rec, he who shall not be named because he's in every movie all of a sudden. But uh, and then it's a bunch of crying Jordan yeah, faces. Fuck that guy. Uh, Raptors. Yeah, fuck that guy. He's good looking guardian of the galaxy self. Can we riding the pine? I think we all. I've come to a consensus that uh, Chris Pratt. No, 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 is... no, no. He who. Oh my God! He who shall not so be sorry. named. You I will not say... go outside and commit seppuku. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Because we we are not we are not talking about uh, uh, Star Lord on on this podcast. He is an enemy of the podcast. Come on, our podcast. Anyways, Cavs v Raptors. Uh, wow, that was it was such a garbage garbage game. One fifteen to eighty four. Uh, they had one competitive quarter, and that was the first, and Toronto ended that down five. Uh, and then after that, they scored uh, only, uh, they scored 23 points in the third quarter. Other than that, they didn't score over 17. And uh, 42 from the field. They shot 20%, abysmal, 20% from three. Uh, although they forced more turnovers, the big stat, they got out, out-rebounded 35-54. to 54. That's huge, and I mean, I, I think that's uh, Valencia Unis not being in the game. I think that's that's obviously uh, a huge impact, and so hopefully he comes back to maybe we get one entertaining game out of this sweep. <laughs> I'm calling it now. <laughs> out of this. It's, out a, of this it's sweep. a sweep. It's not a series. Let's, if it's not a sweep, it's because Cleveland uh, decided to to uh, go get Anderson Verjao. Off of the thunder. They call that the gentleman <laughs> sweep. Yeah, um, or the Warriors. I'm sorry. Gentlemanly. Verge to allow the other team to win one game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll tell you, the meme that really needs to be going around is not the Raptors with the crying Jordan faces on. It needs to be everyone who suffered through and watched that needs to have. Uh, the, Just the, people the watching audience. the game, it, all it, crying it was Jordans. So, yeah. it, was, it was so awful to watch. And, and, <laughs> and to give you an idea, I was with two guys from uh, a sister company of mine in Mexico. I was with these two guys, and, and basketball's not big in Mexico. And they told me, hey, this is a playoff game, right? And I said, yeah. And they said, okay, well, we've always heard that playoff basketball is a real big deal. It's way better than, than the regular season. I said, oh, yeah, it's, it's so much better. you got to see this. And we well, wait, and in. you chose to show them the Cleveland Toronto series that everyone knew was going to be a shit show. That's that's what was on at the bar where we were at. It's not like I said, "Hey, you guys, make your travel arrangements to come to town." You should just show them game. like uh, uh, mid two thousands basketball or something. Well, they so they're here like and New we're Jersey watching Nets and, v uh, Pistons or something. <laughs> we, we we start with about five minutes to go in the first, and uh, they watched oh. in the second quarter when it was just a bloodbath. Oh, and what they was said, that? Uh, like a sixty six to like? Did they even get fifty? No, they didn't get fifty. No, what was it? A sixteen point? Uh, no, excuse me, it was a seventeen point. 
something like that. It was yeah. It was but anyway, so we're sitting there, we're watching, and 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 they explained to me that there's something in Mexico and, and in Europe with, and I don't watch soccer, you know, I don't watch sure. communism sports, uh, <laughs> and so there's there's these things they do called interleague play where where teams from different leagues will play each other in friendlies and yeah, like friendlies. sometimes yeah. yeah they're friendlies and sometimes it's totally obvious that the two teams that one of the teams totally outmatches the other it's 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 not even close but you know they don't play as hard as they can and everything and they ask me is this like a preseason friendly game like what is this is this like <laughs> is this the developmental team playing against the pro team like is this the triple yeah. a going up against the mlb team it was uh, it, it was embarrassing to show them that. That's Mexico throwing hellish shade at Canada. Damn, dude. <laughs> we're gonna have we're gonna be the buffer state in that war. That's just gonna be tacos v poutine forever. And they're gonna ride mules, and the other side's gonna ride donkeys, and it's gonna be great. Or mooses, I guess. Is it It'll mooses, be mooses or just now? moose? I think moose is just plural on its own, isn't it? I like saying mooses. Okay. So don't so yeah. yeah. David, can, can we expect to see anything? Out of this series, that's that. that it, well, let me rephrase this: Is this even a worth a, a, a series worth watching? No, uh, of course anything can happen, but it, <laughs> it won't so happen. You're so kind. <laughs> well, no. like I said, so of course the Raptors could suddenly decide that they're a good team and mm-hmm. make some three pointers, and Kyle oh, Lowry it's up to might them. go seven for seven yeah. instead of zero oh for seven. Mm-hmm. Um. But we have no evidence for that in the playoffs. The Raptors looked really good in the regular season. They won one less game than the Cavaliers. They played the Cavaliers very tough in the regular season. But um, (laughs) while have they been hot garbage for the whole playoffs, it is a fluke that they are here in the conference finals. Oh, Chris Bosh. the, The Eastern Conference made a monkey out of me because I was so excited for the what what was supposed to be a more competitive Eastern Conference, an improved Eastern Conference, and uh, boy, they let me down, and I was wrong, and I'm an idiot, and well, I'm sorry okay. I have ever praised the Eastern Conference, ever. <laughs> and the Heat are garbage, and the Raptors are garbage, well, and the Hawks are garbage, and well, the, the Celtics, well, boy, are they scrappy and fun, but they're garbage, too. <laughs> the, the, the Celtics are close. I feel like Brad Stevens just needs a guy. Uh, maybe he can work Ben Simmons. One into guy, his, yeah, his plans. Or, I'm sorry, not gonna happen. They got they got the third pick in a two person draft, and they are fucked. It's not gonna matter who they get. They're not gonna be a star. They could There's get only uh, two was that was that really tall guy? Paul Paul Till, that guy. They, get... Yeah, I, I'm sure he's great. He is. Can you not say that a little more foreign? Simmons or Ingram? Paul Till. Uh, he's from Sweden or something. I don't know where he's from. Who cares? He's from Probably one of those white countries, Serbia. Uh, but uh, but I, I'd say the Hawks are fun to watch in the regular season, and they have a really fantastic Twitter account. And uh, I think the Pistons were the best match over Cleveland, and they got swept. So, <laughs> which is surprising. I thought maybe the Heat, if Bosch was healthy, would have, you know, stolen a couple games from that series and 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 maybe made Cleveland work a little bit. Uh, but I'm very surprised that Detroit is a better matchup than the other teams that that Cleveland has now, gone through right now. Like this is crazy. Yeah, I am not so surprised because I think Stan Van Gundy is a god and he can do a lot with a little. And <laughs> he's a he tiny, surround- <laughs> mustached, fat Mario looking horse horse voiced god. No, he has Ron a Jeremy got tired though. doing porn and Ron Jeremy decided to be a basketball coach. Ron That's... Jeremy's mustache turned into a human being that was fun now, fond of basketball and turned into Stan Van there, Gundy. That's what it there is. There is a video out there that I think we should put in the show notes of Stan Van Gundy demonstrating his players demonstrating to his players some dribbling moves and oh, that no. guy I mean he's got something Oh now you laugh and yeah, he does oh. look like a dork when he's doing it, but that guy can handle a basketball. He knows he's his better. shit. He is he is a fat asshole who sure knows how to coach. Oh, I a team. love him. No, I love him to death. Don't get me wrong. I love Van Gundy, not the other one, the the the, the relevant one. Uh, I love him, and uh, but man, he do should not be. trash Jeff Van Gundy on this podcast. Jeff Van Gundy will, will never talk shit about another screen. coach. The moment he talks shit about another coach, he's my favorite guy on TV, but he won't. He just won't do it. Like the other day, I was watching a classic game, a classic one. Uh, I don't remember. I showed you guys it, but uh, uh, maybe it was the Pistons thing because I'm getting nostalgic right now. But um, And I wanted to see actually good defensive team basketball. 
But, uh, man, he just goes up there and uh, I forget. It was probably Craig Sager or someone who's like, or Marv Albert's like, hey, who, you know, who deserves to be fired or whatever. And uh, he says, oh, I don't know about that. And then whoever the color guy was, maybe it was Kerr at the time. Or, no, it wasn't Kerr back then. Aldridge or something. Uh, he goes, what if I gave you their entire year's salary to tell me which one deserves not to, deserves to be fired? And he's like, well, uh, I don't really have to get back to you on that one. No, uh, you know, we'll see if you can make that happen. Maybe we'll talk about it. Like, if you can make that happen, maybe you'll talk about it. My goodness, man, he's he's like reverse Charles Barkley because he knows yeah, his I, shit but won't see. ever say words. <laughs> he does know his shit, and he knows exactly when a coach is oh yeah he does like garbage. Just, he knows goodness, he knows just... who the Byron Scotts and the Brian Shaws are. He knows that they're awful, but. There's he's got this weird camaraderie brotherhood concept and honestly fuck, fuck those other coaches. Jeff Van Gundy was a better coach than half the guys in the league. Oh, um, totally agree, totally agree. Uh, let's let's hit you with some stats on this game before we get uh, over the uh, extinction event that we're witnessing in uh, real time. Uh, Bismack Biombo is probably the best player on the floor for the Raptors. Uh, he went five for five, only had four, four rebounds, two each on each side. That's a- terrifying thought yeah i know bismack biombo best player kyle lowry went four for 14 DeRozan nine for 17 which is over 50 percent. so maybe he was the best but he did nothing else he and got lowry. five assists he got no rebounds no steals no blocks three turnovers and one personal foul like he didn't do anything if you're scoring points great but you're demar DeRozan. but you have athletics like that's your whole thing go jump Go grab a ball. Four rebounds. That was, by the way, four different guys got four rebounds. That was the max. Do you know who the top rebounder for the Cavaliers was that game? Just guess off the top of your head without thinking. Anyone? Do you think maybe? Tristan Thompson. Sure. Okay, that's a good guess. He was number two. Lou, do you have a guess? Don't, don't, don't tell me. Don't tell me it was LeBron. No, it wasn't LeBron. He was actually number three with six. Richard fucking Jefferson. 11 wow, that's right 11 guy, rebounds that's right he still plays i forgot he, <laughs> he was played a thing. 22 so, minutes he had five through five for six from uh free throws and two for six field goals and coming off the bench getting 11 rebounds only one turnover that's fantastic he was plus 20 in his plus or minus for the game i mean just the guy like why is Richard Jefferson showing up all of you other people? I mean, you have Luis Scola on your team. He was he has a headband, and he's from Spain. Ecuador, now, right? Ecuador. It's, it's Richard, Mexican Spain. Richard Jefferson is the prototypical LeBron wingman. Um, the Heat had Mike Miller and James Jones way past their primes. Now, Mike Miller couldn't even sit down on the bench. He would lay down on the ground on his back. Oh, yeah, because it hurt have... so bad. No, he was awful. Yeah, but he would come in the game and be old and shoot threes. And, of course, LeBron James wants veterans on his team that can be, like, not a dumbass and shoot a three every now and then. And that is Richard Jefferson's job. He used to be a freak athlete. Um, I wanted to talk about Kyle Lowry I was gonna and DeMar say, DeRozan. Oh, talk God. about Kyle Lowry first because Those, he was the most disappointing player in NBA so history. He looked so desperate and just so, like, the desperation in his face out there. I mean, he was just chucking it up. Z- and, like, zero for seven yeah. from three-point land. Four for he, 14 total. He, he was total. just throwing the ball up, like, with no purpose. You know, we talked about the other day about how Steph Curry, how everything looks fluid. And every, oh, every motion no. that he does serves a he purpose. Didn't, he didn't do that. Lowry just, yeah, we did. There's no wasted motion. No, no, no. That was no, the term he, that we No, used. he didn't do yeah. that. Not we. Oh, 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 okay. No, Fucker. but Lowry just looked like he was... It, it was desperation mode five mm-hmm. minutes into the game. Oh, yeah. It, it no, really he was. was it was just... He, he, he had five assists. He was and he knew it. Five assists and four turnovers. From your starting uh, point guard, that's awful. You can't have that. You can't even have four turnovers no. in general from anyone. Uh, uh, and uh, LeBron James had four turnovers for the Cavaliers. Uh, and four assists, but he's got also two offensive rebounds, four defensive, two steals, a block, win 11 for 13, two for four from three. Like, he's doing other things. He's making up for his turnovers. Kyle Lowry, you're not doing anything. You had four rebounds and five assists and four turnovers and two fouls, and you hit nothing. You didn't get to the line once. You're not being assertive. Neither did DeRozan, by the way. Yeah, uh, 
two seasons in a row, regular seasons, Kyle Lowry has played like a borderline superstar, yep. got voted as a starter in the All-Star game. Yep. Um, generally excellent. Now, two seasons in a row, he has been terrible in the playoffs. I don't get it. And Is it? Okay. DeMar, I... DeMar DeRozan did not shoot a free throw in a game. And if DeMar DeRozan does not get into the line, he is not even worth being like, he shouldn't even be a person. Like that is his worth as a human being is <laughs> get getting to the free throw line. Stolen. Three of their yeah, starters. I'm re- revoking Actually, his personhood. I would, I would like to note Kyle Lowry, DeMar DeRozan and Damari Carroll all went without a free throw attempt in the game. Oh, and wow. the only starters uh, that did were obviously Patrick Patterson and Bismack Biombo. Four free throw attempts between them. Four. Uh, uh, Tristan Thompson had four alone. Kyrie Irvin had four. J.R. Smith had four. LeBron James had four. Kevin Love had four. Richard Jefferson had six. Della Vadova had three. Like, you gotta assert yourself and you gotta get into the paint. Why are you shooting from the perimeter so much? I'm surprised DeRozan only shot one three. I'm so surprised. Be- probably what? because Kyle Lowry was the blender and couldn't do shit. He's awful in the playoffs. I have no idea. And I have a question for you guys. And and Lou, you can try to answer this first, and then we'll hand it over to David. Is Kyle Lowry's problem in the playoffs, in your opinion, pressure? Like, from a mental standpoint? Or is it the defense he faces? Because I don't see him playing like this against the Cavaliers in the regular season, but it's because uh, they're rationing up on defense. Because but you'd think that if they were doing that, he'd get to the line a little bit more. Combination but, uh, of, of of mental toughness and the level of defense that he's facing. I, I He looked, like I said, he looked desperate and scared. He didn't want to drive into the paint. He didn't want to try and create anything underneath. He just got the ball beyond the arc and just said, oh, fuck it. Just, uh, there it goes. Like, just, uh, get it away from me. He was, there, there, there was absolutely... He was as un Westbrook as I've ever seen someone ever. It, it was it was so whatever the antithesis of of, of Russell Westbrook is, that was him. It, 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 he really did. He just looked scared the entire game. He Bad. looked like you know what he looked like. He was the kid who was playing his first baseball game where kids are pitching to each other, and he's afraid of getting hit by the ball. That's exactly That's what, what it looked is. like. It, That's exactly what he looked like to me. Bad Westbrook is better than that. And that's saying a lot. Bad Westbrook is still going to draw, is still going to get to the line four times. He's going to get some rebounds. He's going to try. He's going to get to the line four or five times, Bad Westbrook will. No, Bad bad Westbrook is still a badass because Bad Westbrook stems from his freakish effort and his (laughs) I'm going to rape the world attitude. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And he goes over the top and that's what Bad Westbrook is. But he's still like he's out there lifting his team up even when he's shooting ill-advised threes from 28 feet totally agree so do you think do you agree with lou that it's a combination uh do you think it's defense and uh just the pressure now i am very skeptical of i well i'm usually very skeptical of this sort of armchair psychology where this player has this character flaw sure where suddenly in the playoffs they are just not a good player anymore and uh playoff mm-hmm. basketball is such a different game but when i watch the raptors i am disabused of this notion and uh <laughs> someone now, went to college the, disabused the, <laughs> Ooh. sorry i'm sorry i'll try and keep it to two syllables for you guys now <laughs> Ky- um Just forget what you're gonna say come on college i i sure did <laughs> No, God damn it, Luke. I, okay, I am sorry. That was Disabused. funny. Disabused. I will never say it again. Now, um, no, no, you're 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 right though. I, I've always been I've always been the guy who's afraid of like, for example, with Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning didn't instantly swap brains or swap arms with with uh, God. What was what was Peyton and uh, Eli's shitty little brother who never made it? You know, um, shitty little brother that never made it. Shitty little brother man. that never made it. Not Archie. That was their dad. What was the other one's name? Just call him Seth because all the worst think... people are named Seth. Yeah, Seth Manning. Everyone knows that guy. There, there you how... go, Seth Manning. It's not like he became his <laughs> little brother. It's it, it's not like you know what? It's not like Peyton Manning said the, the the day before they were getting ready to play the Patriots to his you know oncologist neighbor. Hey, you know Doc. Uh, oncologist? Does he have cancer? So, uh, 
<laughs> well, no, but oncologists make money, so they would live in Peyton Manning's neighborhood. Okay, hey, Doc, you know, my okay. arm's not feeling great. You got a spare you could give me? You got a, you got a spare there at your office that you can just throw my way and just put on some jabroni's arm? No, that wasn't happening. It was it was just a matter of other teams were preparing harder for this guy because of the situation. Um, but no, Kyle Lowry, it, it's not a matter of pressure. I think it's a lack of mental toughness, period. Uh- I will say I am impressed on your uh, on your skill and grace when it comes to working jabroni into conversation. So one point, Lou. Apparently, this is around the horn. Uh, so David, uh, what, I, I, did you want to finish your thought on Kyle Lowry before we move on? Um, sure. Teams teams do uh, ratchet up their defense. They try a lot harder in the playoffs because there's only there's only so many playoff games, and that's. Like that's when players think, oh, this matters. Maybe I should try really hard, um, which I can understand. The regular season is really, really long, um, but it is it is a mental toughness and pressure thing, um, I think. And of course, this is armchair psychology bullshit that I usually am so skeptical of. But things do get a little more intense in the playoffs. And Kyle Lowry clearly does not deal with it very well. And it's disappointing because I love his game. He's a fun guy to watch, and he has ascended into this like superstarish player. Um, so yeah, it's disappointing. And I thought the Raptors were going to be so good. I thought they had gotten over some hump, but uh, I don't think again yeah. the Eastern Conference. I was wrong. I think both of those guys are very, very solid number twos, and I just don't think they can they can do it unless they have like four or five number two guys. Uh, the loss of, of, of Jonas is huge. Uh, and again, hopefully he comes back. I think it was an ankle, but, um, man, I just don't, I just don't think either of those guys are are really equipped to, to, to do playoff things. Um, and something to consider, we talked about how top heavy, you know, saying, Hey, you've got between three and five of the top 10 or top 15 players in the NBA on the court when you're watching at any given time, when you're watching, the Warriors and uh, the Warriors right. and Thunder go at it. You know, fuck when you're watching when you're watching the Cavs, you've got three of the top ten best play best players in the East on the on the floor at any given time. Oh yeah, so I think I think between the the, the, the the East is so much more top heavy than the West is. So the I level of competition is just uh, it's not there for the Cavs. Between the three teams, you could fill out an All Star roster. I mean, you could send those those guys to the Olympics. Let's say Curry, Thompson, Green. Westbrook, Durant, LeBron, Love, and Kyrie, and they would clean up. Yeah, but we've still they got people like Slaughter playing in the fucking oh, yeah. dunk contest. Come on, LeBron, be a man and get back in the dunk contest. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so um, I guess we'll just move on uh, because there's no more playoff games. That's it right now. That's all we got. No. Uh, we could, uh, we're going to talk hockey in a little bit. But uh, before that, uh, because of how the NBA works... It's always the coach's fault. It's very much like the NBA, which, uh, or it's very much like the NFL in that it's always the coach's fault and they don't get enough time to build. So we have some coaching vacancies in, uh, especially uh, down in your hometown, Houston, uh, which is, that's how people talk down there or something. I don't know. That's not what we sound like. Uh, It's exactly what you sound like, man, to everybody else but you. Uh, So we have some coaching uh, 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 rumors. and uh <laughs> commenter sex. hey look, v- viewers hit us up in the comments down there does lou sound like this fuck yeah, i do lou sounds damn just it. like this damn it so according to reports lou <sighs> and i'm sorry i'm sorry to tell you this um <sighs> and by okay so sam castell was in the running for the houston job uh there was it, it, there it was, was a novelty hold on, hold on, that was a novelty there, there was offering. rumors that jeff van gundy might do it uh, maybe you could get clyde the glide back or something uh who knows who knows but uh, right now, the front runner for your team, the Houston Rockets, seems to be Mike D'Antoni of Steve Nash and and Amari Stoudemire fame from early two thousands yeah. when he was relevant. That's the guy that might be in charge of your team because if Dwight Howard needs one thing to add to his game and to help his his back out, it's probably to run the fast break as much as possible. Right, right, and right. obviously they have an excellent point guard there. In someone, I'm sure someone will run that offense. I mean, it can't uh, go through Harden because um, point guards need to pass. 
Right. So uh, how, how are people in Houston feeling about your coaching situation right now? And, like, what's the chat? Like, who do who's the fan base want? Well, uh, fan, obviously the, it's the, not the fan base. Well, look, I'll tell you, you asked the question, what do people in Houston think? People in Houston don't give a shit. I mean, really, the, the, the Rockets, we were so if, – if you think that – if if you think that Harden and Howard didn't give a shit during the playoffs – during that during that series with the Warriors, you should just see what the fans at Toyota or what the people in Houston feel. We have we have been so despondent to this team all year. We just do not give a shit anymore. Uh, that being said, the Rockets fans. I mean, obviously Jeff Van Gundy is is beloved here. Um, he's one of the most beloved guys out there. The official story by Woj as of uh, five o'clock today is that he is officially out of the running and uh, Van Gundy is not being considered anymore. Quite frankly, selfishly, I'm okay with that uh, because I don't want to lose him on TV. I mean, you, you have your opinion on him. I love him though. I love Van Gundy on TV, so I don't ever want him to get another coaching job ever again. Um, <laughs> as far as Dan Tony, you know, it, 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 it does make sense from the standpoint of, Hey, we've got a team that doesn't know how to play defense. Hey, Let's get a coach that doesn't know anything about defense. That'll go together just just perfectly. I mean, yeah. D- d- well, you know what, David? There has to be some. Did did he win like defensive coach of the year like twelve times in a row? And I just don't realize it, and I forgot it. And I there's no way a, a sports or a sports team could be this stupid, right? Like, there's no way I'm this much smarter than Daryl Morey, the GM of the Rockets, right? I uh. I don't think the Suns teams of the mid 2000s were as bad on defense as people make them out to be. But Mike D'Antoni is not a great defensive coach. No. Um, now, the Rockets have the personnel. They were a great defensive team just one season ago. They were a very good defensive team, at least. Um, they have good defensive players. Even James Harden, when he is locked in, when he gives a shit on defense, is a good at least one-on-one defender. He well, can lock a guy down. I will say, I um, think he just I think is Trevor, a lazy fuck. I, I will say, I think Trevor Ariza has taken a step back. Corey Brewer isn't playing as hard as he did, and Patrick Beverly, for some reason, isn't the guy he was last year. Yeah, the, and uh, I think the it's otters. chemistry. I think it's all yeah. chemistry. Honestly, yeah, the, yeah, the, 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 the Otter definitely seem... lost a step this year on aggressiveness. Yeah, because here's the thing about defense: uh, offense, you, you can play for yourself, and everyone can play offense. Anyone who's ever played basketball, when you're on offense and you get the ball, you're trying. Like it's fun; it's a good time. Unless you're you Kyle Lowry, you well, he tries. You don't, <laughs> you don't play. He still shot a bunch. Like he's having, he's trying hard to have fun. Uh, so. When you play defense, though, you're not playing for yourself. You're playing for your teammates. Like you got to trust in your teammates to uh, pick up a guy on on a switch on a pick and roll, or you got to make sure that like if you're driving to the baseline where Dwight Howard is, uh, that's like he's gonna be there to cover you. Uh, if someone blows by you, you're not gonna chirp at James Harden. You're gonna be like, it's okay, I got you. Like we're gonna be in this together. It's a team effort. And when you're not a team. It just doesn't work, and they're not a team. When I look at them, I see a bunch of pretty talented... Like, I see a bunch of guys that could play on all sorts of teams and really make a difference, but I don't see a team. No, they, they fell in the hole early this year, and they never dug them their, their, their way out of it. You know, we all, we all thought that things were going to get better once Mikhail was gone, and it just continued to spiral out of control. Um, it, it's not a team right now. Can Dwight and and James coexist is the real question. I mean, a year ago, everything was great. Everything's fine when you're winning. It's like a it's like in a company, you know. Revenue hides a lot of flaws, but uh, I, I'm I'm not sure if they can continue this. I mean, where where they're going to be able to package Dwight is beyond me because they whew, they tried like hell at the deadline this year. Oh, he's got a player option too after this. Yeah. Uh, so he's staying if he if he wants to get paid, which he will because it's twenty three point two million. Uh, but also, Ty Lawson was on the books this year, and he's uh, flame out, obviously. Uh, but but he's not Forgot on. Forgot he was year. on the team half the year. Forgot Twelve he was million there. next year. You owe Josh Smith one point four and Jason Terry one point four. Uh, they're off the books. You're getting rid of Marcus Thornton. You got some options like Michael Beasley's probably not going to get picked up, although he's cheap. It's only one point four million if you want to pick him back up for a team option. That's not bad. Uh, but like Chuck Hayes, who's not making shits coming out. So I mean, you got you got some guys coming off your books. Um, and like Terrence Monty, Jones Monty and, and, and Monty, well, Monty is a, he's a restricted free agent and so yeah. is Terrence Jones 
Terrence Jones. So, um, I mean, you got guys. Did you know Harden's only making $16 million next year? That's weird. Yeah. For a guy that's, that's supposed to be insane. the superstar. But, uh, yeah, they actually have the fifth highest payroll, and most of it's due to the Lawson deal, uh, which will clear up a lot of room. But, uh, man, I don't know who's going to want to go to Houston. Now, the Rockets players uh, who were so good on defense, I think they were second in the league in uh, defensive efficiency just a season ago. They did not all turn into, like, unskilled defenders all of a sudden. Um, but like you said, Jake, uh, you have to care about the team if it's if you're going to be motivated on defense. Mm-hmm. Now, um, James Harden came into camp about 15 pounds overweight and played himself into shape eventually yeah. and is notorious for not caring on defense. If your best player doesn't try on defense, he sets the tone. Why should you? Why should you carry the load for the guy that's supposed right. to be a leader? Um, now, the Rockets, they, they just they just hate each other. Um, and they brought in a guy who just racks up DUIs and shows up to practice drunk. Mm-hmm. Um, Dwight Howard asked for James Harden to be traded in the offseason. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, Dwight Howard asked for James Harden to be traded. That does not bode well for your locker room situation. No, not So, at all. I mean, the Rockets... They they need some sort of shake up. They need a guy or they need a coach that's going to, um, well, put put them in their place. I guess get them motivated. If I'm um, if Jeff I'm and- the Rockets, if I'm the Rockets right now, what I'm doing is I'm you got to eat Dwight Howard. You just I mean he's staying. You're not gonna dump twenty three million dollars on someone. What you got to do, honestly, blow it up. Trade James Harden for draft picks to like like fucking who cares? Where's New York? Or... That's where we were four years ago, though. No, I know, but but Harden is not the guy. He's not ever going to be the guy. He's going to be your Carmelo. And while he sure he might sell some tickets, you're never going to get over the hump with a guy like that unless you sit down with him and you're like, okay, here's the what the fuck's going to happen, uh, and you make it public, like okay, James Harden's got to like you got to put him on blast like that and make him and Dwight get along, or it's just not happening. And I don't think it's going to. Now, I don't think James Harden is a winner. I'll he's, tell you what. He, I, I have to disagree, Jake. Of course, because uh, last the year Rockets they were really good, but it wasn't because ago. of him. Yeah, one season ago they well, were really good. Course, and the next season, Jake, after they spent more time together, they don't like each other, and it's just not going to happen. You can't play a team Jake, game he was, like that. Jake, James Harden was the runner-up uh, yeah. in MVP voting to That's Steph fine. Curry last year. The players... The players voted him MVP over Steph Curry. Mm-hmm. They don't win 56 games and go to the Western Conference if they don't have a player like James Harden. Who else is going to score the ball? Even Michael Jordan had to be had to have us come to Jesus. And when he did, that's when he started winning championships. And I don't well, think James course. Harden's the it same is... guy. No, listen. I don't think James Harden right. is the same guy. I mean, he's clearly not as he's clearly not as talented as Michael Jordan, let's be real. But he's Oh, not, wow. He's, he's... What an indictment. Yeah, what well, oh, huge <laughs> hot take here. Um, but uh, but <laughs> he still needs that. He, he, like he, you need someone to sit down, and there's not another Phil Jackson around. That's why I thought that maybe the Van Gundy was a good thing. But now <laughs> D'Antoni, who doesn't have a spine at all, it seems he's always getting pushed around by his players. I mean, look what happened in L.A. That was garbage. Uh, like that's not the type type of guy you need. You need a guy to, to go in there. And I'm surprised Teron Liu was was that guy for Cleveland this year, but. Um, like you got, you need a guy to be in there and go like James Harden. I'll bench your ass. I don't give a fuck how much money you make. You play for the team or you don't play. Like that's the Josh Smith thing all over again. Josh Smith had this whole thing his whole career. Super talented guy, really, really amazing scorer, and he could he played the shit on defense sometimes. But man, no one fucking wanted to play with him because he's a blender. You give him the ball and it disappears from play. Michael Jordan was like that his first few years. And then he starts getting beat up by all these great teams of the 80s and 90s. And then you're like, okay. And then he gets into a fight and punches Steve Kerr. And then everyone's like, okay, we got to be on the same team. And Phil Jackson takes Michael Jordan. He's like, dude, you got to fucking play together or you're not going to win shit. And then they roll off six straight with Jordan. Obviously, they have that gap in the middle. But Jake, what you were saying all sounds like evidence that James Harden, being the talent that he is, needs the right situation to maximize his talent 
To say that he's not a winner seems a little ridiculous to me because they did go to the Western Conference Finals. No, I mean, um, when I say that, I don't mean that he hasn't won. I mean that he doesn't have the mentality in place to desire no. to win. He doesn't He doesn't have that thing that says, I will do whatever it takes to win. He will do maximum effort on offense to win. He will not do whatever it takes to win. And this is what we're seeing with guys like uh, LeBron or something, who's kind of being forced over time to play with players like the Kevin Love thing was awkward for a while. And, but like uh, in Miami, they all played together really well because they're good friends and you see it. I mean, you can watch it when guys have your back. That's when you win. And James Harden has all the talent in the world. And if they would play for James Harden, all those other guys like they did last year, they have a chance. Even if he gives up on defense sometimes, because LeBron gets really fucking lazy on defense from time to time, usually in the regular season and not the playoffs. But still, Dwight Howard will play for a guy like that. James Harden, you, and that's why I said if you're if you're not gonna get a guy like D'Antoni's not the guy. If you're not gonna get a guy like that, you gotta fucking trade him and start over I, because you're not doing it. I completely agree, especially that D'Antoni is not the guy. They are not, that is, D'Antoni is not the guy to get the most out of James Harden on defense and to tighten up their execution and get effort out of them. Now, D'Antoni obviously is an offensive wizard. He's demonstrated that um, even his bad teams in New York and LA, he gave them a little boost on offense, but he did not get along with those players. Um, they didn't like him. He didn't like them. He is not a strong voice. Um, there are so many interesting strong defensive minded coaches out there right now and they're going to bring in Dan Tony who might be able to get a lot out of them on offense but that has not been a problem this season um it is effort and chemistry and they need a strong voice i think i totally Lou, agree with you thoughts well you know actually what i was going to ask you to do because i i agree david sell me on dan tony i'm i'm I, I am the Rockets fans. I am collectively the Rockets fans. You're Leslie Alexander, and you're going to go with Dan Tony. Sell me on this guy. What what can you possibly say he is going to be able to do for me? It's it's hard to sell Mike Dan Tony uh, <laughs> in this situation. I That's I depressing. love the guy. His his Phoenix Suns were brilliant. Yeah. He changed the league with the way he ran that Suns team. Sure. But I mean, the Rockets have a pretty good offense. Usually. Um, and well, what I would hope, like in a perfect world, um, Mike D'Antoni convinces Dwight Howard to be a role man in a pick and roll. Dwight Howard does not like being the role man in a pick and roll. I don't know why. That's well, such guess, like. That's guess like... what, Dwight Howard? That's your greatest strength. Like, you are a lob catcher. You should, like, you should, it should give you an erection the idea of catching a lob. <laughs> And dunking. You should be DeAndre Jordan. And instead, <laughs> you want the ball in the post and you put stick em on your hands. Like, yeah, no. get your shit together, Dwight Howard. Run a pick and roll with James Harden. You guys need to, like, go on a retreat in the mountains for a week. <laughs> and Or however long it takes, however long it takes to develop some chemistry. Now, I don't, I don't think D'Antoni, one of them comes if, back. If you send those guys into the wilderness alone, only one of them comes back, dude. And his name is Dwight Howard, and he will, and he will resorb that's what, uh, Harden, and he will now have the beard. That'll be fine. He would look good with yeah, a beard. Well, that's a good point. Can he grow a beard like that? Because I'd like to see that. I no, you know, no I'd like to contractually, see... he's not allowed to from a merchandise and branding standpoint. No. <laughs> Interesting. Now, when Dwight Howard has his little mo thing, mohawk thing going on, um, well, he doesn't have that going on anymore because it was a Velcro problem. Um, in practice, him and James Harden's beard stick together. It is a problem. Um, same thing, let's see, Taj Gibson's beard and Carlos Boozer's hair. Same problem with Joakim Noah. Um, there's a Velcro thing. It doesn't work. You can't have James Harden's beard and Dwight Howard's mohawk. That's part of why one of them has to go. <laughs> there, there, there is a follicle limit on that team, and, and it has there, been reached. There is. Yeah. There um, is. So uh, moving on to the other team I wanted to talk about, which is the Magic. And there is a reason 
They are irrelevant, but there is a reason I want to talk about this. Uh, so for a little bit, uh, it, it, it looked as if Adrian Griffin, um, former NBA player, might be uh, the front runner for the Magic job, and he's getting interviewed and stuff. But it really looks like Frank Vogel, former Pacers coach, is going to be the guy to go and take over the Magic. Um, now, I bring this up for two reasons. I, I'm a Frank Vogel fan. I didn't like playing the Pacers, and I think they play hard uh, under his team. And I, he's an analytics guy, right? Like, he's always kind of doing his thing. Um, which is which is which is good for a for a basketball team because I think you need to be progressive in that situation. But I bring it up because I think the Magic and the Rockets should switch who they want their coach to be because D'Antoni could use a bunch of young guys and run all up and down that floor. And Victor Oladipo and what Alfred Payton or whatever, yeah. Uh, and Evan Fournier and uh, Vucevic, and if they re-sign Brandon Jennings and Ursan Ilasova, and they have Aaron Gordon, Mario Hizanja, like they have all these, like Shabazz Napier, run their asses off. Don't get Frank Vogel. Go get Mike D'Antoni. Rockets, go get Frank Vogel. Don't get Mike D'Antoni. Like, no, yeah, it's totally so exactly. obvious, right? This is such a fit thing. That's an excellent idea, Jake. Um, seven <laughs> seconds or less. Uh, the Suns were so famous for it, just sprinting down the court every single time. Yeah. I mean, the, Orla- the Orlando Magic have some young legs, a lot of very athletic guys. Aaron Gordon um, is a freak. Yeah, nuts. Um, also, Payton, he has a mohawk. Victor Olof Depot. Or sometimes he has a it's, mohawk. It's a good, yeah. So. He's got a good mohawk. That's well. Yeah. Uh, on an upcoming show, we will be doing our mohawk rankings in yeah, the league. Of course, uh, go ahead, Jake. And and I, I wanted to note uh, the Orlando Magic. Contrary uh, to the number five overall payroll from Houston, the Orlando Magic have the third lowest payroll, meaning they have the most upside in the league, probably because they have actually good talent. Uh, maybe Portland. Portland has the lowest, and they're pretty damn good. But. Um, these guys have a bunch of up and comers. They have, uh, like they're losing Brandon Jennings on the books, Jason Smith, who is nobody, Chris Copeland, Jared Cunningham, Joe Harris, Keith Appling, uh, of Michigan state fame, poor, poor Keith Appling. Uh, but next year their, their payroll is 35 million. That's it for everyone. They still have all their good players. uh, 35 million. That is not allowed. You're not allowed to have 35 million. No, I know. They they got to go extra. (laughs) They're going to have to go spend $30 million. $30 Thirty million. That means they could get a max guy, a role player, and another role player, not including the uh, draft pick that they're going to get. So, like, they, they, if they went out and got someone, and they got Dan Tony, that would be good. Frank Vogel is going to do fine wherever he's at. Let's be real. But this team, now, if you if you want to fucking exploit your youth, Dan Tony's your guy right now. I completely agree. It is interesting you say that about have about having room for a max guy because the Orlando Magic tried to get Paul Millsap on a max contract mm-hmm. a couple of seasons ago. Paul Millsap took less money to stay with the Hawks. Um, and it was probably a smart choice. And now he's butted into a superstar. Um, but Orlando seems like a really cool place to be. Um, Florida has, what, like way low state tax? Um, but they haven't had much luck with free agents. I don't know why. Um, I don't know who they're going to get. Kevin Durant's not going to the Orlando Magic. Mike oh, Conley's not no. going to the Orlando Magic. Pau Gasol doesn't want to play on the Orlando Magic. I don't know who they're going to get. Yeah, I, I really have, have no idea. What's the marquee free agent for next next year? Like, honestly, who's the guy? Durant, right? That's that's the yeah, well, that's you, that's the big guy. There's yeah, a bunch yeah. of second level guys, um, but most sure. of these I mean, guys. Uh, Kobe Bryant's available, I hear. Um, <laughs> but I, why, I guess Wade. Not? Do you think he would go down the road though, and and do that? Um, uh, Aldridge would be not, available, I guess. But I not I'm in a million years. Yeah, no, no, it's not happening. Don't, Kyrie. <laughs> None of that's going to happen. DeAndre Drummond is going back to the Pistons. Um, of course, he is a restricted free agent, and the Pistons would be idiots if they did not like match any offer. Um, none of those players, most of the top players are not moving. Even Durant, probably after the success in these playoffs, stays with yeah, the Thunder. I don't know. Um, Maybe someone like honestly, Al Aminu. He, he definitely earned himself a contract this year, but... Uh... I'm looking at all these guys well, that are free agents this year, and 
I'm getting mid-level guys like Marvin Williams, Jay Crowder. <laughs> it's not, Mar- not hey, Mar- great. Marvin Williams is going to get paid um, because he shoots threes and plays defense, and I that's suppose. worth $15 million a year right now, even if you're 31 years old and on the end of your back half of your career. J.R. Smith is going to get paid because he shoot three- shoots threes and suddenly plays defense. Um, yeah, I, There's I just don't so many of these guy. guys. I just don't see no well best of best of luck to the magic but they're gonna have to reach the salary cap floor um by signing garbage players um good luck orlando magic uh you've got some talent but you are not getting a good veteran this off they season might, i'm sorry Pal, s- Pal gasol is not signing with you guys maybe they'll just sign, best of luck to maybe they'll just sign uh i don't know uh, uh chris copeland to a max deal just for one year just to like, oh, you won the lottery. That, that'd be fun. He sure likes to shoot and do nothing else. I like <laughs> I like him and his uh I like him watching his dreads trail behind him and I like watching him shoot threes. Um that is all he is good for is hair and launching ill advised three pointers, which no well, to his credit, he can shoot the three. But um uh, wow, what a waste of talent Chris Copeland is. Yeah. Um yeah, I don't know who else is out there. Um the free agent market's weird this year. Yeah, I don't know. And uh, maybe they're going to have to go get a guy in the draft, which is actually our next topic. Um, uh, so uh, the the draft came out, and, and, and we all know um, that Philadelphia – I know maybe not all of us know. Maybe it's breaking news to you. Philadelphia got the first pick overall, so they're probably going to get Ben Simmons, uh, probably. It seems like all, all signs are pointing there. And Orlando, uh, on topic, has the 11th overall pick, so they're going to get nobody. But um, – what was very interesting is for you NBA conspiracy theorists, uh, Dikembe Mutombo actually tweeted out three hours before uh, news went live that uh, Philadelphia had won the draw. Uh, that hey, congrats Philly, like on 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 getting the first overall pick. Now, there's two ways you can go about this. You can go skeptically and say, well, he's Dikembe fucking Mutombo, not not the brightest guy I've ever met. Or, or talked about uh, before, uh, let's be real. He's not the dumbest either. He's Dikembe Mutombo, but I mean, like, not in my house. You know, uh, <laughs> he's that guy. Or you can go full conspiracy theory and think Dikembe Mutombo is on the inner circle of the NBA and he got first word. And and uh, it's all it's all been since David Stern all the way through to Adam Silver now. It's just been one big fucking conspiracy, and they want Philadelphia to succeed, and they didn't give it to the Los Angeles Lakers. So, I don't know. How do you feel about this? Is there a conspiracy in the NBA, David? I'm not at liberty to say. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. So we're getting some... Uh... No. So you you mentioned Dikembe Mutombo I did. being in the inner circle. Of course. Um. Well, I mean, that's possible, but this <laughs> inner circle is must be fucking huge yeah because how many how many guys are like how many guys down surely Dikembe Mutombo is it's not, not like a number three guy yeah he, the, he's uh... one of the top three elite like he's one of the guys who oh, has yeah. it's, the it's metaphorical finger on the button in the NBA <laughs> like silver like yeah. seriously oh, yeah. so like Adam, Adam Silver the deputy commissioner it's, it's a, and it's Dikembe a big Mutombo. ass finger no, he does actually, a lot with that finger well no I don't know if you guys are aware of this though is oh yeah no 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 uh no, Adam Silver last year so or two years ago so the big deal comes out. Oh, I can't even remember his name. Uh, the owner of the former owner of the Clippers who said all the racist shit. Um, oh, that guy. We know him. Don't worry about it. Doesn't, God, doesn't know, it just just like Cooper, racist old, Co- old Cooper guy. Manning. That's who it was. It was Cooper Manning. Anyway, <laughs> so Seth Manning. I think you mean Seth Manning. I think that's right. Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, sure. No, but anyways, so no, no that's that's Sterling. how it went down. Donald Sterling. So, Donald. Donald Sterling. So. This whole thing comes out, and he's saying, "I wish you wouldn't hang out with these people and them, and blah blah blah." And and Silver, he he hears the tape, and he says, "Fuck, I really need my A team." Picks up the phone, "Hey, Dikembe, got some shit that went down, bro. I need your help to solve this issue for me." Yeah, Dikembe is at the very top of the pyramid, <laughs> and is is Silver's right hand man. Yeah, obviously. Um, <laughs> so it doesn't. No, look I like think any- I think Dikembe is just he he's he's not he's he's a wonderful ma- human being. He's a great guy. He's done great things around the world. I'd love to meet him one day. He's just not very bright. Right. I mean, what he what Dikembe Mutombo says happened is the Sixers uh, reached out to him because obviously he's an alum, 
and they're like, hey, if we get the first pick, could you tweet, you know, congratulations to us? And he's like, yeah, sure. Not in my house, though. And uh, he's like, I'm going to go outside for it or something. That's a terrible Motumbo joke. Deal with it. And um, uh, so he, he they send him a little email with a little package of, like, uh, pictures he could use for the tweet or whatever. Like, they just pre-prepared them. And uh, he tweeted it out early, three hours early, actually. And maybe he misunderstood. And then he's like, oh, but now it is in the air. And that's an actual quote from him. Although I did it in my Arnold voice on accident. I was about I to say, did do, can't they really like, do a get together? Is he going to be in the next <laughs> Expendables movie? Is yes, that what's probably. going on? <laughs> probably. I'd, he'll just like someone I'd throw a grenade that, and actually. then he'll slap it out of the air into some Russians. And, and not to my house. And then and then we'll, everyone will Are go, the Russians ah, the bad guys in him. those movies? I've never seen one. I don't are, know. I just who think are the bad guys? <laughs> common common decency <laughs> yeah common de- it's uh yeah. uh the enemy in 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 those movies actually twist is the audience because they made you pay for those actually expendables 3 was actually kind of fun but uh it's because it didn't take itself too seriously uh but yeah so i think mctumbo just no. kind of fucked up it's not really a big no, deal jake your explanation is a little too convenient i don't buy it <laughs> Also, Stefan Marbury and Latrell Sprewell are also in on it. So, uh, no, yeah. I mean, the, the, I mean, the conspiracy theorist people that come out with this, there it's would ridiculous. have to be so many people who'd have to be on the pay, and there'd have to be so many people who you'd have to you'd have to have hush on. So this stuff, and I say this as a you know, and we'll dive further into this as we go into our personal lives. I, I say this as a former nine uh, eleven truther guy. <laughs> um, yeah, Maybe that's so why you might not say it now. I, I, I got Jet sucked fuel in, man. can't saw... melt steel beams. I, hey, <laughs> dude, look. Dikembe Mutombo can melt steel beams, so... Yeah. Yeah. You who know wants... who else can melt steel beams with his hot takes? Draymond Green. Ooh. I'm so Did good. He actually I'm getting really, one? really good at the segues. Uh, don't worry about it, though, because uh, I will get better. It will just com- continue to improve, much like Draymond Green's opinion on the WNBA. That's two. Oh my god! I just did too. Yeah. So Draymond Green likes the WNBA. No idea why. He says he watches now, it to like improve his game. Right. We already established he's trying to impress the lesbian in accounting. That we established that the on last, last week's game. show. Yeah, that correct. has to be it. David, now, you are actually, a big, so, you're a big Draymond fan. So, so you defend your guy here. I sure am. And now, while I. Like I said last podcast, I do not make an effort. I will watch the WNBA and think it's nice to watch, but I will not reach for my remote to turn it on. It, it's not nice to watch, um, though. It's 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 like well, high school I boys think, basketball. Now, I completely disagree because <laughs> those kids don't know what they're doing. The WNBA, um, they do not have the athleticism. Sorry, ladies, uh, you don't. You are not going to jump out of the gym like Russell Westbrook. Some might. Uh, um, Brittany Griner might also punch someone. That she supposedly loves. God damn you, Brittany. Now, <laughs> I wanted to believe yeah, she in let you me so down. much, Brittany. Now, here's the thing. Draymond Green pointed out that there will be guys in the NBA uh, just because they can jump, but they can't do shit. And Darvin Ham. They don't know anything. <laughs> Whereas in the WNBA, all that is there is tactics and footwork and... Um, fundamentals, like all that they have is I. Well, this or, feels like a shitty thing to say, or but being, they play with their brains. <laughs> or you could just like, be from UConn, <laughs> and then you're automatically going to be the highest played women's that player. That helps. Uh, yeah, that helps. <laughs> um, so I, I can, I, I don't think, I don't think he was lying. I don't think he's necessarily wrong. Um, he said he learns more from the WNBA because what he's not watching, what he's watching is not athleticism he is watching tactics and footwork and pivoting and well okay. that's what they have well uh, hold on it, uh, okay um, and uh, the here's... high school boys basketball is very uncharitable jake and i have to push back against that too maybe maybe they, they, I... they're not it's not so viscerally exciting but they know their shit in the WNBA. i've seen high school boys dunk all over the place so maybe maybe that's why i like it but uh, 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 I will say, uh, Draymond. Nope, Jake just said he likes high school boys, so just keep that in mind. A lot. So deal with that. Wait till they're uh, eighteen, Jake. Please, God. Don't tell me what to do. I'm, I go to Canada for my boys. Anyways, I don't know. If, is it legal that Mexico make probably is more legal? But anyways, uh, <laughs> I'm not gay, but I do like boys. 
uh, Draymond Green, uh, uh, if there was a camera B, I would turn to it right now to talk to you directly. Uh, Draymond Green, if you would like to watch uh, uh, fundamentals and and footwork and all that stuff, and you know you want to learn how to box out and really play with your head, uh, just you know go go to your YouTube. Uh, on, on your browser, whichever is fine. I use Google Chrome. You can use whatever. You probably have a Mac here in the NBA. You make money. And uh, 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 type in the words Tim Duncan highlights. There you go. And then, and then, not only will you learn, you will also learn at someone from your skill level. And the best part, you will be entertained and not want to kill yourself. Jake, I, I was literally no. preparing to say all he has to do, if if he wants to watch fundamentals and he wants to watch footwork and he wants to watch team basketball and, and solid tactics, there is this thing called the San Antonio Spurs. We've known right. about them forever. They're not new. We've been watching this, this, this guy named Popovich do this for the last 10 years or well, 15 years or what? 96? Jesus Christ, going on 20 years now. Yeah. We've been watching this for 20 years. Dude, you... Pl- Crazy notion, Draymond, you've actually played against these guys. You have. You have actually played against these guys before. Maybe he's too embarrassed. It's like there's a guy at my office who's really, really good at something, and I'm embarrassed to watch him go do it, so I'll watch other people do it because he's so much better than me. Draymond is too embarrassed to admit that he watches the San Antonio Spurs. No. So what he says is, I watch the WNBA. And <laughs> That's, that that, that so, may take some of the heat Come out on. of your hot Come take on. there, Lou. Uh, but yeah, I, now, I agree. Do you think, um, now, is Draymond Green a guy that's afraid to speak his mind or be honest? When he oh, says yeah. this, Draymond I Draymond Green him. is known for being and soft-spoken, Draymond Green, guys. He is, uh, he's a very heady player. He is not a freak athlete. Um, he is better by the year. He is a very brainy guy, and uh, I I believe him when he says that he learns from watching the WNBA. And I, like I said, I do enjoy the WNBA when I watch it. I do not go out of my way, but I believe him when he says that it is fundamentals and Whoa. footwork and tactics. And uh, well, obviously, we don't get to see guys jump out of the gym. But uh, I I don't I don't have yeah. a problem with what he said, and I think yeah. he might be right. But you know, and that, and that's all okay. Um, but I I think he probably watches the WNBA for the ads, uh, because they do. If you if if you've noticed, they have a lot of ads on their jerseys. And actually, the NBA just adopted that. Another segue. Segue. Boom. <laughs> actually, guys, I almost had to leave for a second because something just came across my news feed. It. Uh, Watch Blake Lively get smashed on Instagram for her potentially racist quote. God damn it. Ah. Like the first five words of that, I'm like, yes, click, click, yeah. click. I do want to watch Isn't Blake that. Lively banging uh, uh, Ryan Reynolds? Yes, I do uh, want yeah, to. And they have a child well, I, together. I do want to watch. Uh, they've got a second one on the way. Yeah, I, I get it. I, would, I, I understand why both of them would want other things in and around their junk. I, so, I, so I if, get it. If, like, if, if I were them... We'd be giving 19, 19 kids and counting a run for their money. I mean, right? I, I agree. I would definitely be all about the quiver full immediately, and that's just that's just if I'm Blake Lively in that in that relationship. Exactly. That's, no, she. Like, no, he's definitely she. She's definitely the one who everybody says, "Oh, she must be funny." Right. <laughs> in that relationship. Yeah. Uh, we and that's crazy. Uh, yeah. So I think maybe a new segment in the show should be called the Ryan uh, Ryan Reynolds Power Hour, uh, where all of us just. Uh, Stare at pictures of Ryan Reynolds and masturbate and try not to climax. Oh my god, um, if Ryan Reynolds and Chris Pratt do something together. I'm sorry, I, Ryan Reynolds and who? Hold on. He who must I not need be a towel. Yes. I need a towel. There you go. Anyway, so the NBA is now adding sponsors to the front of their jerseys and their classy little tiny little patches on the top. And some people, some purists are all pissed off about it. I don't really give a fuck. Uh, and the first ones to do it were the Philadelphia 76ers with their stub hub thing, uh, which is fine. I think the Sixers need every dime they can get at this point uh, because they have all those first draft picks that don't matter, like Joel Embiid, who will never see the floor. Or, uh, you know, uh, didn't they get Nerlens Noel at one point? Who, where'd he go? And then they, they have sure Julie did, Okafor, they, who's actually pretty good. The 76ers, who they should be advertising, is, well, probably for the... 
Pennsylvania State Lottery because that's what they play every year. They rely on the lottery, and that's about <laughs> it. You see, and David, I completely disagree. I don't see how nobody has pointed this out yet. But here's what's incredible about about the 76ers, and, and we'll, we'll talk more about the intricacies and the logistics of how this thing works and whether we think it's a good idea or not, blah, blah, blah. We can talk about that in a minute. The 76ers come out. The 76ers' sponsor is StubHub. Hmm, what does StubHub do? They take tickets from people who have them that don't want them. Let's take a look at 2016 <laughs> NBA attendance report. Who comes in dead last in attendance in the NBA? Gotta say it's like Philly. The Philadelphia 76ers come in dead last for, now that is percentage of tickets, uh, uh, that is percentage of attendance versus tickets sold. They're actually, they, they're, they're third from the last before the Nuggets and T-Wolves uh, as far as actual people at games. You know, but, and that's not the Timberwolves' yeah, they're fault less because no one lives there. They're less than 70% full at their games. So I I do find it just perfect that StubHub would be <laughs> would be their sponsor. That that is too that's better than the Bulls having, you know, Jack Link's beef sausage or beef jerky or something like that. That is just perfect to me that StubHub yeah. well, would I think, be I think sponsoring obviously the team we should, that nobody gives a shit about. Because of the clout we have in the sports world at this point. I mean, we're 3 episodes deep. Uh, people respect us around these parts now. I think I think maybe we should take the liberties of maybe making some suggestions for some teams. Um, and and I, frankly, I'll just go first. Uh, and I think uh, my hometown, Detroit Pistons, should really go with uh, the slingshot. And uh, for those of you who don't know what a slingshot is, it's um, it's a water purifying system uh, that they have sent over to Africa. And uh, a lot of places don't have like potable water. It's like really dirty, and most diseases start uh, like you know, with with dirty water. And you can really you can really turn a place around. And because Detroit is exactly the same thing as Africa, only with snow, I think they need to have a sponsor that would help the community. Uh, and so the slingshot uh, should be should be their thing. And actually, um, it, it can purify uh, like forty tons of water a week or something like that like fluid tons and and that's really impressive and so I'm like maybe Miguel Cabrera could get a drink uh from the Detroit Pistons uh, uh water fountain or you know uh I don't know who's who's unemployed Detroiter every Detroiter I was about to say all of well. all of the Detroiters right so it's it's not only Is that the helpful, word by the way Detroiter Maybe. It's not only, uh, I think you're looking for the word homeless person. Ah, uh, uh, transient. Yeah. That's, right. that, that's it's a trans- the official term. Yes, yes, yes. So it's not Detroitian. only beneficial for the team. Detroitian it's a, it's benefic- in the traditional French. It's beneficial for the city folk. Uh, I actually thought it would be nice, and uh, I'll go ahead and get this over to uh, the Rockets' Twitter handle here in a minute. Um, which, by the way, check us out, The Pine Bench on Twitter. That's our Twitter account. Go look at it. It's a thing. Touch it. Uh... <laughs> I think that it would be nice for the Rockets if ADT or Brinks Home Security or Home Defense would sponsor them because then at least there would be some defense on the floor. That would be nice. I think, think that would that'd be, be really nice. Now, the Indiana Pacers, home to noted DUI artist Ty Lawson, hmm. are a testament to needing a fucking ride sometimes. So how about Uber. Uber, Uber needs to be on an oh, Indiana Pacers. That makes jersey. sense. There you and go. Maybe, and maybe they can sign a, a deal for to incentivize uh, that pot a little bit and make sure Ty Lawson gets back and forth to practice on time. Someone's um, going. I'm actually going to send my next one over to the Milwaukee Bucks, um, and they can um, uh, get the Snuggy on board, get a little Snuggy patch, uh, because obviously it's it's very cold, um, but also only really ever been a novelty and never really relevant. So ah, they have so a lot beanie, of common. beanie babies and Snuggy are going to sponsor the Milwaukee Bucks. Absolutely, that's it. Yeah, I was thinking about uh, you know obviously you know raid from Essie Johnson, a family company, to take care of the Hornets. That would be nice. Wow, uh, that's a pun. That's not okay. All right. Well, how about uh, the Sacramento Kings advertising mm. for Flintstone vitamins because Demarcus Cousins is a very healthy child, <laughs> <laughs> a a temperamental <laughs> tantrum throwing child. But clearly, very uh, healthy. Oh, he's doing all right for himself. Also, he has a very thick beard. They should shear him like a sheep. It's um, it's it's growing. It that's worrisome at, at uh, whatever age. <laughs> let, let's see, how old does he act? I don't know how old he actually is, but he acts about five years old. So that <laughs> seems like a hormonal problem, and he should get that checked out. 
<laughs> Maybe it's from all the vitamins. Uh, I think the Boston Celtics could use a little bit of a bump from Gronkosaurus energy drink from from last episode and maybe also get Gronk as a cheerleader and just kind of put him on the sidelines when he's not playing football uh and so it could be you know and then and then obviously all the players instead of drinking Gatorade or water to hydrate them will just drink this the the syrupy uh, uh carbonated beverage of Gronkosaurus and then they can all get a really bad cramps Mm, and speaking of cramps, something that'll prevent that would be, uh, you know, hydration. So I'm thinking for the Miami Heat, we get Yeti coolers to sponsor the Miami Heat because uh, now that Bosch is probably done and Dwayne's gonna be gone, yeah, it's gonna get real cold in Miami real quick. So I think uh, I think Yeti brand coolers will be will be real good down there. Walking on the edge of a pun there, Lou, but I'll allow it. That's all I have is pun and self-deprecation. <laughs> That's it. You you knew me when you married me, okay? You knew what you were getting in bed with, all right? Well, I'm going to put one in for the Warriors, um, who should probably... Well, I'm going to get in trouble for this, but the Warriors should be advertising for tampons because Draymond Green is clearly appealing to the ladies deliberately. <laughs> Question: Who will we get in trouble with for this? Who 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 are we reporting to? Hmm. Um, who's, um, who's the, the International Council of Women. Oh no, well, Dikembe Mutombo is in real good with them, dude. Don't worry. I'll, I'll yeah, just he's put in, in their call. top okay. three. Okay. He's in their top three. It's totally it's, <laughs> the it's inner totally circle. Uh, my last one is actually going to go to the L.A. Lakers, um, and I think they should get uh, actually both both sides uh, one patch on this side. Uh, and the other on the on the left, and and it should be for ghost hunters, uh, one for the corpse of Kobe, and then the other one uh, to commemorate Magic Johnson's eventual death from rich people AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the rich him. It's it just takes so long to set in, but once it does, it's really gonna take him. No, I thought it would be nice. I found out today uh, or a couple days ago that the AARP now has a family program where if you've been a member, if you're an old person who's been a part of the AARP for a long time sure. and you have a grandchild, you can bring them into the AARP family. And I think that's a perfect transition for what we're seeing with the Spurs right now going from these 97-year-olds down to these 12-year-olds that are going to be playing for them. So oh, I think it'd be nice if the AARP... Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow fund, I think is what it's called, were to sponsor the Spurs. I think that'd be nice. That makes a lot. That makes a lot now, of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Now I have some breaking news. Um, yeah. For, firstly, the Warriors are up. Um, I think one sixteen to eighty eight on the Thunder Ooh. in the fourth quarter, which is I think more how we expected the series to go. Absolutely. But more, more importantly, the Knicks hired Jeff Hornacek as head coach, and. Uh, I, I think he's he played basketball board. once. He definitely yeah, played out, basketball sorry, once. Sorry, Houston Rockets. Dang uh, it. I thought Jeff Hornacek was, was confined to Utah. I didn't think we let him out. but They uh, they tr- they tried. Yeah, and now he's going to be traveling with the team, spreading Hornacek everywhere. It just always sounds like a disease <laughs> to me. Uh, <laughs> now, it, it is a, important in, in speaking because we just got off. Have the, safe Hornacex. <laughs> there we are. Because we just got off the uh, we just got off the WNBA. I, I did. I was talking about this story earlier today with somebody and uh, mm-hmm. with a group of guys. And and of course, uh, you know, they're all they're all just normal guys. But one of them is, you know, he's that. He's that that guy who's different for the. He, he's the sports hipster. He's the. Oh well, yeah. I don't want. I, I watch he's Formula a Pelicans One fan. racing, and I watch the Tour de France, and I you know the 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 guy who watches the World Cup, but he doesn't right. he know gets the, dick he gets about NBA soccer. league pass and only watches the D League stuff. Yeah, exactly. He's the D League <laughs> guy. That guy. So, me and David <laughs> are sitting there talking, and uh, no. But so we're talking with this group of guys and we're saying, well, hey, this is a big deal with the with the Sixers doing this. They're the first ever major U.S. sport to do it. And he jumps and he says, what are you talking about? The WNBA has had sponsorship on their jerseys for years. And we look at him, we go, yeah, so the first major U.S. sport to have sponsorship on their jerseys. I know it's a big deal, right? So it, <laughs> it, it really is a big deal as far as but to talk on 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 what you brought up at the beginning, the purists get upset with it. I don't understand that. Every other sport in the world, we we have, there's branding on the cup that you're drinking the soda out of. There's 12 different, there at the game, there's Aramark Food Services. 
and Halliburton and fucking Halliburton. everybody else. There's ten. Different- <laughs> you know you're in Texas when you fucking get nachos and it says Halliburton on the side. It's oh like, yeah. I don't know. I'm Dick Cheney. I blew fucking Arabs up. It was cool. Well, hey, I mean, how about it, them it, Texans? They're disappointing again. But but my point is is you've got all this branding on there. So for it to be on the players, I mean, goddamn. Anytime you go watch the Lakers or the Clippers, you see the Staples Center right there. You know, you see the Pepsi Center when you go to yeah. Denver. I don't understand what the problem with having with having labels on the jerseys are. Now that being said, I will point out the jerseys that will be bought by fans will not have these on them. Nor will the jerseys in the playoffs. Those won't have them either. So it'll just be during the regular season. Uh, there are a couple of exceptions, like you can't go out, you know, the, the NBA can veto certain ones, like, you know, Jake's porn Dildo hub. Hut, you know. Porn we hub couldn't probably do that. is the one. Porn, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah porn-related um, things, alcohol, tobacco. So there are certain restrictions. And also, the way the money will work is the team takes in 50% of it, and then the other 50% goes into a share, it goes into a pot, because obviously the New York Knicks far more valuable uh, sure. than the Milwaukee Bucks. And it's not like the WNBA, uh, which is what some people were scared of, where it's just like fucking ads everywhere, but that's because they have no money. Like, they have to Kobe Bryant, survive. Kobe Bryant is still the highest paid player in the league right now at $25 million. So, I mean, like, we're doing okay in the NBA. Obviously, next year he doesn't have a contract, but, uh, like, it's it's fine. So it's just going to be these little patches on the, on the top, and that's fine with me. That looks fine. And frankly, I would kind of want to buy the regular season jerseys with the thing on it. Kind of like um, if you see like Premier League uh, soccer or or real football, as the UKers would say, um, um, like they have their ads on there and stuff. Uh, so I, I, yeah, I think it's fine. It looks fine. It's okay. I just don't want it to overtake the logo of the team or the name on the back of the jersey for, of the player. If it's classy. And and kind of like like there's they still they already have like the Nike swooshes and the Adidas and the stuff on there. Exactly. There's already so branding on the shit anyway. It's, it's so totally cares? fine with me. As long as it doesn't get ridiculous. I think limit it to one, and I don't think the NBA is ever gonna do more than that. I mean, there's ads all over the fucking place anyways, like on the sidelines and Oh, you don't and, want them to look like NASCAR drivers with shit all over them and on patches yeah. on their pants? Come on. No, man. no, I would I, and maybe you could put in a rotational thing instead of like like alternate jerseys get a certain sponsor and so on but uh i I like the idea of not putting it in the playoffs um although i gotta imagine the sponsors will eventually say well well, we're gonna pay you a ton of fucking money to put us in the playoffs so um and i like the revenue share as well and and speaking of money david silver is saying that he expects uh by next year when they have more teams that are willing to do this they expect that to to see up to a hundred million dollars by next year already uh worth of advertising dollars that's crazy teams uh well, and Mr. Nate Silver um is right, and the league getting more money is a plus. Um, that's just a positive. As an NBA fan, I want the NBA to make more money. Um, these purists are ridiculous. The world is a giant billboard. Who gives a shit? My only problem is like the potential aesthetic problems. I don't want NBA jerseys to look like a hippie's knapsack covered in <laughs> shitty patches. Um, right. Yeah. No. And I like, also I just, don't think just I don't... keep it looking clean. Right, and I think I think it's important for the NBA to make sure that they're not sponsoring the wrong people, like uh, like the Donald Trump campaign or something. Well, I don't think you could ever go political yeah. with it, but yes, actually, I, no, that's, that's, that's kind of that's right kind of where I'm, you cannot have political, military, make assault, America affiliation, great. right? Uh, Stuff like that, alcohol, like, like, tobacco, or pornography. I'm. I think the Los Angeles Lakers with a porn hub brand on it would be fucking rad, but uh, uh, <laughs> that's fine. Um, also Man, competing is... brands, which means that the NFL could not sponsor an NBA team. Oh, that makes sense. But can one do Coke and one do Pepsi? That's the real question everyone's asking. I, you, you've got to imagine that the Denver that the Denver Nuggets are going to have Pepsi logos on their jerseys next oh, season. Oh, no. Give it to the Celtics and then give Coke to the Lakers. I have a question. I've always had this. I've always wondered this, though, because people are talking about eventually will we get to where they are in the Premier League and the way they are in soccer. Right. Like, for example, Real Madrid has – I don't even recognize Real Madrid. I just recognize the Fly Emirates or the Emirates Airlines or whatever it's right. called that's on the front of their jerseys. I've always wondered – what happens if, like, for example, the Monterey soccer team, my, my company, the parent company is in Monterey, and we go to a couple games every year, they're sponsored by Corona. 
I figure everyone who's a fan of the team likes Corona. No, these people fucking hate Corona. So you buy a jersey of a brand <laughs> that you hate and you walk around with it all the time. Yeah. I, I just, I could imagine the Rockets. What's a brand that I just fucking despise? Like Apple. Budweiser. I hate Apple computers. If, if, if the Rockets were to have Apple computers on their jerseys, I couldn't fucking go. I couldn't, I couldn't even be. In the, it, <laughs> you wouldn't go. I couldn't be in Toyota Center <laughs> with them. It, it would kill me to be there. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder you know what if, I, think? I wonder I, if there's going to be conflict with and I think that's probably why they're going to keep the patches off the jerseys cuz one they would have to then do some kind of revenue sharing with those people but two I, I think they don't want to alienate people from having to walk around with a brand that they hate on them. Yeah, probably not. Um but uh keep, staying on the topic of jerseys but moving sports uh the Tampa Bay Lightning have recently said that they're going to do I think everyone agrees one of the most boneheaded, short-sighted, least petty, most petty, le- least least fan happy I uh, thing, and and that is uh, during the playoffs, the Tampa Bay Lightning are not going to allow uh, on on I assume uh, ice level seats, uh, probably not the nosebleeds, but on ice level seats, basically anywhere where the camera is going to hit, they're not allowing opposing team jerseys. To be worn by the people that bought those seats. Now, there's two ways to think about this. If you're a Lightning fan, you're like, yeah, fuck other teams, blah, blah, blah. But if you're a human being, other than that, you're like, but but fuck that. What if I have a favorite player that was from the Lightning that now plays for a different team? Or what if I'm a transplant and I am from somewhere else and now I'm in Tampa Bay or and you're playing my team or or just anything in general this is such a fucking bullshit uh uh, uh policy that they're putting on I'm not a huge hockey fan no. but I am a Red Wings fan as far as it as far as that goes cuz I was there in the 90s I was much more into it back then but um if they did this I would be very very against it so it's not just cuz it's someone else it's just genuinely a bad idea. Now, I uh, I went to Baptist High School and we had a dress code there. And I thought I would avoid encountering a dress code for the rest of my life. But if I go to the <laughs> wrong hockey game, they'll check my clothes at the door. Uh, this is yeah. kind of a problem. I, I mean, don't even know how that works. I, I don't know Do how they they're not embarrassed. Surely this is worse publicity than yeah. a person wearing a jersey from a different team. And also, is this only hockey jerseys, or can I wear, like, a, I don't so, know, a Michael Jordan jersey? So so I, I'm I, I'm the one who's been super fucking heated on this, and I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll read out the thing. I'll read out the official statement. And, and, and full disclosure to our listeners and to the two of you, I'm from Houston. My knowledge of hockey is basically the first two Mighty Ducks movies – and uh, <laughs> Blades of Steel on the NES. So a Nintendo game and two shitty Mario... Uh, uh, what was his name? Mario Estevez? What? what? Emilio. Emilio Estevez. Uh, shout, Emilio out, Estevez. shout out to NHL 94 for the Sega Genesis. Get your shit together. Okay. Well, it's, I, I was a Super Nintendo kid. My point is, I, I know dick all about hockey, but I do know about being petty and being shitty from being, you know, being from Houston. <laughs> so here's what the Lightning did. They, we all made fun of the Broncos back in January for the AFC Championship game. They said, you know what, we're only going to sell tickets, obviously to our season ticket holders, but to people who basically live in the mountain time zone, Colorado, Idaho, Utah, South Terrible. Yeah, Wyoming, all those places, because we don't want, we don't want pa- uh, Patriots fans to come here. They took that and they said, hey, we'll see your pettiness and we'll raise it (laughs) one Donald Trump. Okay, we will raise you a Donald Trump on being petty and bitchy. And I am just shocked by what. Okay, so here's so here's the official what they've come out with moving forward uh, for the remainder of the playoffs. uh, The Lightning released a statement saying that you will only be able to wear Lightning branded apparel or neutral apparel. You will not be able to wear apparel of a uh, of the team whoever they're playing which right now just happens to be the Pittsburgh Penguins. So if you are someone who's a Pittsburgh Penguins fan who lives in Tampa Bay or say you're a Tampa Bay season ticket holder, even if you're a season ticket holder cuz these all of these seats on the ice, these are season ticket seats. These are not just general admission seats. Right. Usually so, usually they're sold for to season ticket holders. Right. They're only to it's, season and, ticket holders. And here's what gets me and this is where I'm going to get a little heated with you. Okay. They come out and they say 
they, 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 you're right, David. They've got a lot of bad PR. So they came out and they said, these, these three sections are only private areas and they are only for our season ticket holders. And they have asked us to stop letting other teams' apparel into these sections. If our members are not comfortable with these policies, we wouldn't have these policies. They wouldn't have asked for these policies. Okay, let's fucking talk about this. These are season ticket holder sections only. And you've got Penguins fans showing up in them. You know what that means? That means you haven't instilled yourself worth a shit to your fan base that the most important time of the year, the fucking playoffs, which I understand hockey playoffs is a lot like the NBA, it's, it gets turned up a lot, you haven't instilled enough pride in your fans that not only are they possibly selling or giving away tickets, they're doing it to fans of the other team. What the fuck is wrong with you, Tampa Bay? This is 100% on you. If you can't fill up your stadium with your fans, that's on you. That is not on Penguins fans. That's on you. And I'm happy to announce p third period just ended. Game three. Penguins just beat the Lightning 4-2. Just happened. Yeah. Breaking fuck news. Em. Good. Woo. Is, yeah. Uh, Lou, the justice. hottest take. Of episode three, two, and one, a, and and this is a not just a Lou take. being, and this is not oh. just a Lou issue. Peter Tagney, and I'm I'm am gonna butcher his name. Sorry, Penguins fans and Lightning fans. He's a he's a former hockey player. Peter Taglianetti, I think is how his name is pronounced. Sure. Don't know. He responds to this thing. He says. If he says, as an ex Lightnings player and Penguins player, I am very disappointed with the team's decision to ban opponents' jerseys in parts of the arena. This is a high school temper tantrum. If pro teams want to stop people from wearing other teams' jerseys, try winning more and doing a better job in your front office marketing. Boom, yeah. mic drop. A Amen. Amen. Yeah. No, That's really. Huge. This is, no, this is it's it's like a big deal. You don't want. <laughs> well, do they take your your fucking Pittsburgh sweater if you're wearing it? They will not you... let you to your seat. What it is is these are they, in the they club won't even level let section, you to your seat. so they won't let you get to your seat. You either have to remove the jersey, they will provide I... you with a blank shirt, or you just can't go to your seats. They have police that are sitting there and they won't allow you there. I and, would... and they are one hundred. I'd wear a within... suit and tear out of it like Superman. Fuck yeah. That's the, or a that's stripper. The, yeah. No, Superman didn't tear out of his there suit. He very neatly folded it and then stuffed it inside his. Superman suit while he was in that phone booth. Uh, no, but but okay. but my point is 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 uh, y they're bringing nothing but bad PR on themselves. They look childish. They look completely bush league in this. And and again, this is one hundred percent on you. If you can't get your fans to fill up your stadium, that's not a problem with Penguins fans being dicks. That's a problem with you not mattering to your clientele. Right. And in the only thing I can use for the lightning's defense is that Tampa Bay historically has garbage uh, attendance at all, all of their sports. Uh, like they're just not a good fan base, much like Orlando. They're very fair weather and F Florida fans are mostly transplants. Right. So not a lot of them have like loyalty so, to a th Like not a lot of people move to Michigan or not a lot of people move so, to fucking green Bay. So <laughs> it, you're, this is not this, the same thing. This is a problem because they're, alienating all the people who are fans exactly. of different teams, which is right. half of their attendees, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Well, and, 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 and from what I understand, talking to a couple of buddies, the, the, the Lightning have never been a major, uh, who, who do watch hockey, the Lightning themselves have never been a major draw. The Lightning, what they are, is they are a sideshow attraction, because apparently there's some gigantic mall there in Tampa that they're attached to. This is like yeah. Mall of America-sized mall. Mm -hmm. uh, and people say, oh, hey, shit. We, for five dollars, you know they're having dollar beer night, and we can get a we can get a, a a lightning ticket for five bucks. Let's go get hammered over there, and then we'll go you know wherever we're going afterwards. So people actually right, view Tampa Bay Lightning time. games the way most people view a stripper. It's just there, and you're 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 there at the place, and oh look, there's some stuff going on over there. That's how people <laughs> view the lightning. Yeah, uh, hockey's a good time too because you you have reasonably priced beer for a stadium place. You get you know your normal uh, stadium fare. And there's always a chance of a fight while there's a competitive game happening that's very fast paced on the ice and in the stands. Right, exactly. So it's I, I totally, I totally, I'm with you guys, 100. percent I think the Tampa Bay Lightning are garbage, and I, uh, if I'm a season ticket holder, I'm not going. 
Now, that being said, what is funny is uh, some Pittsburgh fans have started printing up and they're selling them here in Tampa Bay, or they're in Tampa Bay. Uh, these shirts, they are Tampa Bay blue. They're they're that they're that kind of light baby blue. Yeah. And it says in very small, it says penguins right across the front, but it says very small print across the top. This is not a, so it says this is not a penguins and then very small underneath that t-shirt. That's so amazing. There, there's yeah, I mean all this is going to do is it's just going to oh. it's just going to rile people up to be to be for them. Uh you know our buddy John who uh who was on the first episode, he and I talked about this and he is a big hockey fan and he told me, you know, I've never cared one way or another about the Lightning. I hope they lose every fucking game next year for doing this kind of thing. Exactly. Let me ask and, y'all, what happened if this were to go into say the NFL? Like like say Oh, the, that wouldn't fly. I, I can't imagine this flying in the NFL. The NFL will never do that, though, because they know their fan base, and they know that people will watch football whether they're fans of the team or not. Like, I, I've been to several Detroit Lions games. You've been to several Texans games. Um, and, uh, like, you see fans in the stands from with all sorts of jerseys on. Right. They might not even be playing in the game. Like, uh, I've gone to a, a – what was it? It was a Redskins-Lions game during their perfect season. And they got destroyed. There was like four Favre jerseys in the stands. Yeah. Not even on the fucking field. Uh, although I did see Brett Favre's last professional game where he didn't make the field. Uh, and, and Joe Webb had a terrible game. There were no Favre jerseys that now, day. I've uh, I've been to a lot of Oakland A's games in my time. And sure. I appreciate so this sorry. sort of thing being settled the old-fashioned way. Where if you're in Oakland and you're wearing another team's jersey, you will be harassed or perhaps beaten out of the Coliseum. Um, <laughs> these things, these things. If your fans are worth a the shit, these things sort themselves out naturally. I don't yeah, wear a Chiefs jersey to a Raiders game because I, uh, well, the Raiders fans give a shit, and there's a reason they give a shit, and it's because the organization is good. Yeah, I will let's, say, let's not I will say well, fans well, being well, dickheads well. either, though. I will say, so it's not the same because the Lions aren't that good, and uh, hockey is a, is a, while it is an aggressive sport, uh, Detroit doesn't necessarily have the, the demographic that they're going for. Uh, let's just say that. When the Pistons are good, you don't wear another jersey there. It's just, <laughs> uh, D- Detroit is still Detroit, even if you're in Auburn Hills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, w- one sport where this wouldn't, or one thing where this wouldn't fly, somebody asked me, do you think that they would ever do this in a sport like, say, baseball? And in baseball, depending on where you are, um, you know, for example, this would th- th- this could be awful for, say, like the Yankees. The Yankee Stadium is something you go to when you're in New York. It- it's almost like going to a Yankees game is a tourist attraction. Going to a Cubs game, going to Wrigley, that's a tourist attraction. That's something that, or, or going to Coors Field when you're in, when you're in, uh, when you're in, in Denver, that's just kind of a tourist attraction. These are places you want to go. I'm always wearing an Astros hat or a 45s hat. I'm I, Whether the Astros are playing the Yankees or not, I'm going to go and watch a Yankees game, and I'm not going to be wearing a Yankees hat. I'm not going to go out and spend 50 bucks on one of their stupid fucking hats. Uh, Russell Simmons has, 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 has bought them all anyways. There are no more. You can't get any more. <laughs> So I, I, I can't believe that this is something that would ever happen. Now, if this were to continue into the regular season next year, God, I just just let the lightning die and let the seven fucking people that show up to their games be there for them. I mean, there would be more people on the ice than there would in the stands, I think. Yeah. And plus, of course, those uh, those shirts they made just what a high level of human ingenuity. Do You know what else is a high level of human ingenuity, Lou? A penis transplant. Can I have yours? Is that is that what we're doing? Is that what's happening? No, you need it from a. a, a, I, a I got an extra happen. thumb. I only need one. <laughs> that would be yeah, that'll work. It's like so. That would so be call back to Tommy John surgery. <laughs> so we're gonna close the show talking about dicks, apparently, because this got shopped around. So, but it is impressive. Finally, the, the we've been suffering for an hour and a half to finally get to the dick. I know. <laughs> Just such a dick drought. On today's episode, of no longer, sir. Consider this the well of dicks. Uh, so the, the a man got the first ever penis transplant, uh, and it was successful so far. Uh, it has not been rejected. Oh God, what would a fucking rejection look like on a penis transplant? That would be horrifying. Well, uh, actually, he there, had like there what? Was he one. had dick cancer from HPV, and and he lost his dick yeah. to save his life. Which is a hard choice. Let's be real. If you're a guy, you know uh, that's like a that's like a coin flip. You're like, I don't know. Uh, I'm willing to die uh, as long as I can still fuck. But 
uh, this guy got a new dick. Uh, I have a question for you. Um, do you think they measure that out, or do you think they just give him the best available dick? Do you think, like, this guy, like, it was swinging between his knees, and then he winds up with, like, two inches right. did he, now? Did he get an upgrade or a downgrade? That's yeah. really what's most important here. And, it, it, again, if, 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 if someone Because if it's an upgrade, I will body, get penile cancer. Did he get to pick circumcised or not? I, I uh, Statistically, in America, I would say... Probably circumcised. The penis Although came from New a... York, so I'm going to say well, that's circumcised. What... I, oh. I have a problem. Sh- surely, surely you get a choice, right? Like it's a problem if you don't get a choice. Did he get? Do you think like, he got a lineup you... of dicks and he's like, "Oh, I'm I like this one." He, he gets to f- he gets to flip through a catalog. Surely of I dicks mean, of what, cadaver it's, dicks. It's two, it's 2016. What kind of society are we if you cannot flip through a catalog and decide which dick you want? Also, do you think that maybe um, it was like a like a tasting plate? And I don't mean like you picked the dicks up and tasted <laughs> them, but like you gotta you gotta know, you gotta Just, like feel it in your hand. You gotta know if you, if this is like a good fit for you or not. And also, like like what if it's way too girthy or way too thin or way too long or way too short? And also, what about the shades? Like he was a white guy. What if what if he's what if the point. dick that feels best to him just isn't the shade for him? Does he have to like? Uh, does he get a choice? Does he have to acquiesce and go for the white dick? Or did the doctors, were they just like, ah, you're the only one's going to see that, it anyway. Let's be real. All we got is purple. Sorry, sir. <laughs> now, now speaking of that, the, the article, now the original article for this, and, and to give you an idea, he was the first successful penis transplant in the United States. There was a penis transplant in China back in 2005. But that's not but, really a penis transplant if it's in China. That's more like a big clit. No comment. <laughs> Uh, but the man's penis rejected the transplant. Oh no! So oh, no. it fought back. <laughs> it fought back. That's this what, is for the rape I, of Nan King. Uh, honestly, some some people are into receiving another person's dick, and do, some do, people aren't. Every boy, everyone needs to go listen. If you are not a child of the 90s, if you did not grow up with alternative rock music in the 90s, you need to go listen to King Missile's Detachable Penis. It is the weirdest fucking song about a man who has a detachable penis, and he loses it one night at a party, and he has to go find it. Weird fucking song. Weird thing. But I'm sure uh, they appreciate the, 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 the article in the, New York, in the New York Times that this was written in was just perfect, because it says, per his doctor, Mr. Manning is handling the penis very well. Oh yeah, handling it. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. He got he had to test it out. You don't Okay, you don't buy a car without test driving it. You right. certainly don't get a dick attached to your body without checking it out. Also, did he get the balls or did he did he uh, he, he his lost own? his testicles and penis during uh the, the Oh, so, so guys, he was look, just, hey he guys, was... I looked this up. Go to CVS and get yourself the HPV vaccine. It's like $17 at Walgreens. This guy lost his dick and balls over this. Go to Walgreens tomorrow and get the HPV vaccine. Please, all of our listeners out there. Well, that's what... Surely in a couple years, you'll be able to buy a new dick there, and it won't be that big a deal. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, this guy... uh, So this is like the final frontier of science, right? Like, we saw Pluto. We have 3D printers. We have... uh, those sex robots in in Japan, and now, oh, now can we, we can, can we three D print a dick? That's we what we need to be able to do. Print a dick. Can we three D yeah, print so a dick it. on Ooh. Pluto? Oh, we have so we've reached that science fiction zenith. It's called the singularity of technology. the The penis transplant was like the the antichrist of that movement. Right, like this is the moment when everything comes crumbling down. Computers are never going to get faster. Your phone is never going to get better. We've no, reached it. it. All the scientists are going home now. There is one thing, and I, I, I will bring this back to somewhat of a serious note. <sighs> oh no, uh, where a lot of the research funding for this has come from is, and this might sound horrible, and this is just one more reason with Memorial Day to coming up to thank every veteran you know and remember what they've done for you here in America. Veterans are a major focus of this because uh, between twenty, dicks. yeah, between between twenty and twenty five thousand young men who have been blown up by IEDs uh, in the got Middle the, East the have lost have lost their yeah. When when you see the guy on the helicopter being life flighted away and he doesn't have his legs, 
Um, he doesn't have, have Kevlar on his junk. His 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 junk is gone too. Why don't so, they make junk Kevlar? That's a stupid idea that they didn't do. <laughs> I, they they should junk Kevlar. You know what? Hey, hashtag junk Kevlar. That just happened. Hashtag so, junk Kevlar for the episode. If you do it, you'll be put in the running to win a thing. The thing is not important. No. So some good will come of this besides this man receiving a dick that he really wanted. Um, now, we are ostensibly a sports podcast here at Riding the Pine. Um, now, is dick transplanting a sport? Well, it hasn't organized yet, but I see a lot of potential here. Thoughts? I could definitely see at least, like, kind of how UFC started. In the uh, early like, days of MMA, how it was really right, underground. Like, like it just kind of like an underswelling of, of, which is actually what you could call it, the underswelling. <laughs> uh, and, and then, uh, yeah, you could, you could actually do like speed rounds, kind of like you have NASCAR pit crews. Like, oh my God, this guy doesn't have a dick. Let's attach a dick. And then you go sling on like a prisoner of war and you take his dick and then you slam it on the guy that got his junk blown up. And then you, and then you attach the dick. And then... Bonus round, one week of recovery, the final round, all those reattached dick guys, circle jerk. So last, he might, the guy so, who so loses, you might not have won the speed in the first round, but you could make up for it in the second You can absolutely round. make up for it. It's kind of like okay, the chase okay. for the cup in NASCAR as well. To make right, you can analogy. make up for it in the future right, races. Right, right, right. Like if you place third in this one, if you, if you place in the top five, like your aggregate is where you finish, and uh, then the, the guy who comes in dead last has to clean up. And that is how we end our shows here at Riding the Pine. In a big pile of semen. Anybody have any uh, closing thoughts uh, before I send us uh, off? Uh, real quick, breaking news. Um, Warriors beat the Thunder 118-91. to 91. Uh, For those of you that aren't math people, that's got to be at least 20 points. Um, <laughs> well, this is There's no way of knowing that, it's... but I will trust you. I will. Well, we'll leave it to the analytics guys. Um, this is more how we expected the series to go. Um, I look forward to seeing more games because I think the Thunder are going to bounce back. Um, I agree. I could see this we going can cover seven. Game... Oh, I hope so because this these playoffs have been a bit disappointing. But I want to see Russell Westbrook, uh, me- the little meteor that he is, um, just blow shit up. Um, so hopefully seven <laughs> games, and hopefully we cover game three in our next show. Yeah, would love to do that. Lou, do you got anything for the for the fans? I'm sure you have one. Uh, I, I, I have to say I'm a little disappointed. We didn't talk about it. The mayor of Toronto came out and was throwing some shade at... Oh, uh, we will talk about the mayor of Toronto shade throwing uh, after the next uh, Cleveland and little, Toronto little disappointed game. that when I read the letter today, it wasn't in Comic Sans because that would have been perfect with them playing the Cavaliers. I think that would have been... Uh, that it would was, have been on, on fleek, as the kids are saying. I don't think any of the kids are saying that anymore. Now they're just saying finna, which means you're about to do something. I'm finna end this show. So for Lou and David, I'm Jake, and this is Riding the Pine. And uh, I'm sure you're all very proud to be listeners of this show. You talked about dicks for about 20 minutes. Reassess your life, people.